Hi, welcome back to the Custom Saber Shop, and today I'm going to show you really quickly a couple of tips for getting your threaded MHS parts to line up, or clocking as it's called. Um, dial, you know, the uh, numbers on a clock. Anyways, you get the idea. Uh, so you've got two MHS parts here, and uh, they're threaded together. Two, um, I got a, a hilt section here, and a double female two-inch extension here, and then there's a uh, an adapter. Uh, double male threaded adapter to get them to, to join up. But the problem is, let's say I want these holes to line up and they don't, not quite, even if it's really tight they don't quite line up. And I want to get them to line up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a couple of things. Um, number one is, is just marking the parts. So what we're going to do for that is uh, I'm going to get a 5 8 inch thick piece of MDF, fairly straight edge on it, and a sharpie. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sharpie and I'm going to measure, I'm going to put a mark right dead center. I can measure that if I want. Right dead center and my hole. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my part on a flat surface, place my sharpie where it can slide and remain flat. And I'm going to line the sharpie up with that mark I made. And I'm going to draw a line so now I have a marking line. I'm going to do the same thing with this part where I want it to line up. I'm going to mark the center of the hole. Now I'm just eyeballing it. You can measure that a little bit more precisely. And get my marker to sit flat. I'm going to draw my line. So now I have a line. Two lines. So when I thread these parts together, whoops, this way. I can see exactly how far apart my lines are. So now I know how far I have to go. I want to really tighten it to make sure. So that's a little less than an eighth of an inch. Of course I can measure that if I want to. So the first way I'm going to teach you how to, uh, to get these parts to line up is sanding. So I can tell that if I sand down one of these parts so that these they can thread a little more, that will get me closer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand down the small part. I'm just going to quickly show you that this is a, a threaded double male adapter in here to, to make two female parts join together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the surface, this surface here, I'm going to take some 220 grit sandpaper, you can use different stuff, and I'm going to put it flat on the table, I'm going to hold it down, and I'm just going to do circular motions to make it even, I, I like to rotate it few circular motions and I'm not going to do too much and if you'll recall the distance that I have yet to go was a little less than an eighth of an inch so as you can tell I'm not doing a whole lot here I'm not talking about hours of sanding do it in small increments clear that out you may want to brush your threads out with a with a toothbrush so that was not even 30 seconds of sanding and now we will see that Look at that, almost dead on. And if I really reef on it, look, I've gone even a little bit past. So 30 seconds of sanding moved that much. So a little bit goes a long way. So sanding is the number one way that you can get your parts to line up. Uh, number two is these new clocking washers from the Custom Saber Shop. And what we're gonna do is, let's say now, that rather than getting these parts to line up, what, what if I wanted them to be exactly on opposing sides of each other? Well, I'm going to show you how to use clocking washers to accomplish that. Okay, a new and valuable tool for this is a strip of masking tape. So, strip of masking tape, and I'm going to make a, I guess I should make a straight edge. You know what, I don't have a ruler here, so I'm going to use this. I'm going to make a straight edge cut. There, whoops. And I'm going to guess about halfway and just make another one right about here. And my piece of masking tape is going to go around one of my parts. So I've already got a line, so I want to match that up. And I'm going to stretch that around to the other side. And I can see that my guesswork is actually pretty close to halfway. Um, you don't need to be exact, you just need to be half or close, and I'll show you why. I'm going to use now my, uh, my Sharpie, and I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to trace where the masking tape ends there. Then I'm going to take the masking tape off. 
and I'm going to reverse it and go the other way. Again, using my line as a starting point, stretching around. You can see I'm really close. Now, if I was too long or too short, the fact remains that as long as I do it the same from my from my mark, I'm going to be, I'm going to get two lines on the other side of the saber. Again, whether the masking tape was too long or too short, I'm still going to get two lines. And in between those two lines is dead center opposite of that line. Always. So your masking tape is too short, the lines will be out here. Your masking tape is a little bit too long, again, the lines are going to be out here. The fact remains that equidistant between those two lines from your masking tape is going to be your dead center. So, what I want is I want that. I want those line, that line to, to match up there. So, I'm going to use these clocking washers. Of course, we know that if I tighten it up, it goes there. How do I get it there? Well, I'm going to take a couple of these clocking washers, and I'm going to insert them and hold them with my thumb, just to give me an idea of how many of these I need. And I know from playing around a little bit that two of them is probably going to be adequate. So, I'm going to screw my part again. Take two of the clocking washers, one, two, and now I thread it on, and here's a little trick I'm going to teach you. When you get close, you want to use your fingers to kind of keep the, the clocking washers smooth so that they don't jut out on either side of your saber. And as you're getting it close to being dialed in, you want to reef it tight. And I am about a quarter of an inch off of my line. So now what I do is I sand this part down just like I showed you before, incrementally, bit by bit, 20 seconds at a time, until I get it dead on that line. One thing that I've found when I've uh, been tightening parts and getting them to try to line up is that uh, any dirt or residue in your threads or in where the parts match up can change the alignment slightly. So as in the other video I showed you about how to take care of your threads, uh, a tooth, an old toothbrush, is a great way to clean out the threads and clean out the, the points where the metal touches the metal so that when you tighten your parts together you're getting the exact same fit every time. Uh, be aware too that uh, aluminum is a soft metal and will the surfaces will wear down as if you're if the parts that you're commonly threading and unthreading. Also powder coating is a is a plastic coating that uh, that if it's powder if you've got powder coated parts uh, that, that powder coating will wear down over time if you're constantly using and unthreading the parts and it will change the alignment slightly. Um, so just keep those in mind when you're dialing in your final alignment. Now I want to point out that it's a little different when you're trying to line up a blade holder. And in this instance it's a, a slanted blade holder with a MHS hilt section with a switch hole drilled. And when I assemble these I'm going to notice that they uh, say, let's say I want the switch hole to line up with maybe this part, the top part of the slanted emitter, and it doesn't. Now, the first thing you're going to want to try is make sure that you put your, your heat, heat sink holder in. The heat sink goes in here. This is actually inside your emitter. This, this is what actually gets, gets tightened um, when, you, when you install your hilt section. So you'll find that it doesn't rattle around in there. It's tightened on that. There may even be a slight, very slight hair gap there. So you can't necessarily use this for your exact reference. Fortunately, um, and of course, it would be obvious that if you sanded that down the way I just showed you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get any, you wouldn't get any movement. Uh, fortunately, there are two different sizes of clocking washers. The original size that I showed you goes is meant for the in between two MHS hilt parts. Well, the smaller size is meant to go on your heatsink optic holder there. And I'm going to put three of them on there because I've already tried this out and, and measured it. And what that does is that changes the distance here. And now, when I screw this on, those three clocking washers in there, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get um, almost a whole turnaround. It's a totally different fit. So now what I would do is then uh, I would sand down the parts to get that. Notice I didn't put any clocking washers here. You can put the original size clocking washers in there, three of them to match the 
three that I put on the inside. Or you can leave it as a nice decorative gap there or whatever you want to do with your design. But when I sand down, obviously I'm not going to sand down either of these two exterior parts. That's not going to help me at all. But what I would do, carefully take this apart, is I would sand down this surface here. So I'd get my 220 grit sandpaper, and I would begin to sand down the same way I showed you, circular motions, and I would sand that down and I would try it again until I had dialed the part in to fit. Um, you can draw lines the same way. You may also notice on some of these blade holders, there's actually a little machine dot that's a reference point of dead center in the, in the slant. You can use that for reference. So it is a little different when using the, the blade holder. It is a little trickier, but fortunately the Custom Saber Shop will be offering uh, the two different sizes of washers for two different styles of jobs to get your parts to line up. So thanks again for watching.